Hello, everyone. My guest today is Dan Reich. He's the co-founder and CEO of Troops, a venture-backed technology company that is building artificial intelligence for work. Troops is working with hundreds of companies and has raised about $17 million in venture capital. He's also co-founder and president of TULA, or Tula, a health and beauty business that has created the world's first probiotic baseline of skincare products. He's been involved with companies that have raised over $100 million in venture capital and have exited for over $1 billion in mergers and acquisitions. Before Troops, he started a software company called Spinback, which he sold to Buddy Media, and then to Salesforce com for about 850 million bucks. He was a BS in electrical and computer engineering from the University of Wisconsin Madison. is con- is a contributing writer for Forbes and has been named Silicon Alley Top 100 by Business Insider. Dan, are you ready to take us to the top? I am. What's up, Nathan? All right, nice to have you, man. So, quick clarifications on the history here. So, um, Spinback, you sold that to to Michael, the guys at Buddy Media. Did you stay with the company through the Salesforce acquisition or no? I did not. I actually left the same day we closed the deal with Salesforce. I knew the deal was going to happen and I knew that I was going to go work for Salesforce. So I actually sat down with Mike and I'm like, look, I'm an entrepreneur. I want to go start another company. I'm too young to go work for a big company. And I basically, uh, you know, worked it out so I could leave the day we closed. Okay. And I want to get a sense of, I always like to get in the brains of where my, my, my folks are when they actually launch the next company. So, I mean, was that, was your exit to the, the 850 million was obviously the exit bu- of Buddy Media to Salesforce, you know, not, I don't think your exit to Buddy Media, but what I want to know is your exit to Buddy Media, was that to that point in your life, your most significant financial event? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Um, And without, obviously, you don't want to disclose the exact number, but give me a sense of kind of in your head. Was that like comfortable money? Was it like I can do whatever I want the rest of my life money? Was it like jet money? Generally, where were you? Yeah, look, it's uh, let's put it this way. For for the time of my life, I was 25, 26. It was, you know, the most amount of money I'd ever made. And uh, but certainly not. I can go retire on a beach money. Right. So, uh, you know, it was good. uh, a good little bump for that moment in my life. It was go travel the world for a month and then get back to work, jump back into a new company. Yeah. All right. So for me, yeah, that's right. And did troops come right after Spinback or did you focus some of your time on this health and beauty brand? No, it's funny. When I left, when I left Buddy Media slash Salesforce, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I just, I had a few ideas for a few different businesses, um, but really had no clue, but knew that if I were in that routine, sort of my brain would have probably got a little bit numb, just clocking in and out every day. And so didn't know what I was going to do decided to leave. My parents thought I was insane uh, because it was financially in my interest to stick around for at least another year. Uh, but I, so I, I hit eject. And what ended up happening was had a few different ideas and actually a venture capital firm called me up and said, Hey, Dan, we're looking at a few different uh, businesses that we want to invest in. Seems like you would have an incredible perspective on these businesses. Would you mind taking a look at them with us? I mean, so what happened? That's was code for, up- we secretly want to get you addicted to make you the CEO of one of them. <laughs> Well, so I think I think from their perspective, they wanted to win these deals and they figured that if I got involved, I might be able to help them invest or get into the deal. And so what happened was we looked at a few different deals together and a lot of a few of the companies I actually loved. And so we ended up coming up with a relationship where I would leverage their balance sheet and they would leverage my experience operating background to do deals together. We would both invest. Uh, and a few of those worked out quite well to the point where they're like, hey, look, why don't you just work out of our office and sort of you could continue to invest with us as you think about what's next. And so I did that for about a year. And and what year was that? That was, uh, that was man, 2012, 13, I think. Um, you know, I did that for about a year. It was five blocks from my apartment, which was incredible. And uh, yeah, look, began to think about what, you know, what do I want to do, do next? Do I want to do this venture capital thing? Do I want to start another company? And so I remember having a ton of meetings with entrepreneurs trying to raise money. And I remember, you know, I remember really conversations going one of two ways. Either I'd have an amazing conversation with an entrepreneur and just be really jealous that I wasn't doing that. (laughs) Or I'd have just a horrible conversation with an entrepreneur and say, man, where did that hour of my life go? And I'll never get that back. And so you know, realized the VC route at that time wasn't for me, wanted to start another company again. Um, and so ruminated on a bunch of ideas and uh, stumbled into the health and beauty company, which I can unpack and then realize I needed to get back into software, which which became Troops. So let's fast forward. Yeah, we'll skip health and beauty. Let's go directly to Troops. So what year was the company founded? 
we started troops in the middle of 2015. Okay, 2015. And for those of you that, for the folks that are not familiar with it, describe quickly kind of what you do. So troops, yeah. So, you know, at troops, we believe that every company on earth needs a way to manage information on their revenue, their customers, their pipeline. We know that category to be CRM. We know Salesforce to be the leader. A problem with it, and many like it, is it's incredibly painful to use, right? Like you log into an interface that looks like it's from the 90s with a bunch of fields, forms, buttons, and boxes. Um, And we just felt there had to be a, a better way. And so the way we think about the world is, you know, man, what's the easiest, most delightful way of interacting with software today? We felt like and still feel like it's uh, messaging. You know, at the time we started the company, six of the top 10 apps in the world were messaging apps. And so we're like, man, what if you could chat with your CRM? Like, what if you could have almost like an artificially You're talking like system? WhatsApp, Telegram, you know, maybe Intercom now, these kinds of things. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and this is, you know, before Slack was even really a thing. Um, we just felt like, man, these things were so pervasive in our personal lives that it was inevitable that uh, consumer software would be as good and as delightful in the work environment. You know, we spent over a third, if not more, of our lives working. That was just an inevitability in our mind. We felt, though, like no one had ever thought about work software in this new consumer-ish way. Um, and so at Troops, our mission and thesis and question was like, What if you could interact with your business systems in Sierra, much like you would with a human in a messaging interface? And so that was really like the question, grand experiment, um, or contrarian point of view that we had. And uh, yeah, we just set out to try to to try to prove that. And so fast forward to today, what is Troops in a more literal sense? We are the leading um, the leading application, uh, most sophisticated application on Slack that connects. Mission critical systems like Salesforce, your calendar, your email, uh, with Slack, which in our minds is like the new operating system for Teams. Um, so that's what we're doing today. Interesting. Um, I don't want to go down every customer cohort, but on average, what's a customer pay you per month for this product? So on average, our customers pay us, you know, many thousand uh, per per year. They'll pay us many thousands of dollars per per year. Okay, and so is that do you, do you price like per seat? Do you have a per seat cost that's pretty average or no? We do have a per seat cost, but it ranges depending on the size and scale of the company. Okay. You know, so, for example, we have customers that have several hundred to a thousand users using us, and then we have companies that have you know five to ten users. Yep. Yeah. So, if we call it kind of three thousand a year, that might come out to call it two hundred and fifty bucks a month, and a typical team might be five, ten, twenty people, something like that. Yeah, on average, it's it's more than that. But okay. I'm trying to get a sense if you're more enterprise or you're more kind of mid market SMB. Well, so yeah, let's unpack that. So for example, some of our customers include guys like WeWork, Looker, Slack, Envision, Flexport, Square. Um, so are they enterprise? Are they SMB? You know, de- depends on how you define it. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Makes good sense. And then you said kind of leading application on Slack. I have to kind of hit you on that and say, well, how do you know? What are you measuring that by? Is, is it number of API calls per day? You, you're the Slack app that has the most or how do you measure that? Yeah, so I would say it's more qualitative. Slack is actually one of our investors. I think we're the first Series A investment they ever made. And, um, you know, they tell us, quite frankly, they're, you know, they, they look at the whole ecosystem and look at what are the, well, who are the companies that are like really pushing the limits in terms of sophistication and possibilities on their platform. And we're sort of top of the list. Got it. What, okay. So 2015, you launch, you develop, you develop, you integrate with Slack, you know, that's kind of the new operating system. You're kind of piggybacking off that whale. It's smart. What have you scaled to in terms of total customers using you guys? We've got about, we probably now have, you know, over, you know, 2000 companies using us in some way, shape or form. Um, And those are paid though, right? Not free. So, 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 uh, the bulk are free. We're now, we've been moving in a paid direction. So we have a several hundred, uh, paid. Okay. And so walk me through that transition. So when did you decide, okay, enough with the free stuff, we've got to introduce a paid, a paid option. A lot of people get stuck on free for life and they end up going bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, when we started the company, you know, I come from a generally a B2B background. So I'm always used to building stuff and asking money for it, but for troops, because we were trying to solve old problems in brand new ways, we're like, before we even mentioned the word revenue, like would people use the thing? Would they interact with it? Would it work? So that's what we wanted to figure out first for, I'd say the first year and a half of the company. In fact, we didn't even want to mention the word revenue because we always felt like for the next, you know, next five, 10 years in this category, 
the companies would win that would look more consumer in nature. Um, they wouldn't be this big, heavy enterprise piece of software that you like drop and deploy and manage and, and people would actually like uh, on prem servers, you know, SLAs. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and even moreover, you know, like if you, if you go to an office at any company and you look at the software that they use to do their job, I would say categorically, most people just don't like the tools that they use. I mean, there's a reason Slack is the fastest growing business app of all time. And I think the reason is the way of interacting with that software is just human and enjoyable. And so the question for us is, could we mirror that delight in this category of CRM? So that was, that was question one. So for the first year and a half, we set out to prove that. And then turns out it worked. Uh, people love this. And so once we hit that threshold, we're like, you know what? Okay, now it's time to start making money. And so we just came up with a price and just threw it out into the wild. So what, what year was that, by the way, the first paywall? First paywall was uh, last year. Oh, oh wow. Okay. So this is fairly, this is fairly new. Now you could afford it that because you raised capital. So you could pay for your team, your engineering, all that without having to ask for money, your customers to pay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, good. And then you said, I think uh, you had 2000 total folks on it, a couple hundred called maybe 200, 300 paying. I mean, can I take, we'll say conservatively 200 times at three grand a year price point? I assume you guys are doing what? 600, 700 grand in AR at this point. Uh, it's more. It's a, you're more. Yeah. Okay, and which of those? So, which of those numbers am I underestimating? The ARPU or the customer count? Uh, the revenue per contract. Revenue you know, as per I mentioned, contract. we work we work with some bigger companies as well. They pay much more than that. Um, which that's good. No, that's good. Um, uh, I, I want to learn more about your team and kind of if you're folks if you have an inside sales model, you know, a high touch model. Before I do that, though, so I mean, when do you think you pass? It sounds like you're you're north of a million bucks an hour at this point. When do you pass five million? When do you think that happens? Yeah, good question. Look, a lot of it has to do with how the market evolves. I mean, you know, Slack is growing like crazy. They're now dedicated to building out a very, very big, big sales organization. And as you know, they're very focused on just growing, period. I think if you look at Slack and where their roots started, it was really in the developer and IT world. Yeah. And um, and so now to expand, they want to get outside of that world. So where would they go? Well, they would go to the CEOs, CROs, heads of sales, CFOs. And when you have those sort of conversations, the questions that those guys care about are very much in line with like, how are we going to make more money? How do we increase shareholder value? How do we increase our forecasts and pipeline management and really everything related to customer facing teams? And um, that hasn't even started yet. And by the way, the Slack competitors are also just as equally focused on, on this as well. You look at Microsoft Teams, you look at Google Facebook has workplace. Facebook for work. So the way we feel our troops is this category hasn't even really started yet, which is pretty exciting to us. What's growth rate? So if you're north of a million bucks in AR today, taking you back a year, where were you? This was just like when you a couple of months after you launched your paywall, probably. Oh, we had no money. Okay, so August 2017 was pre-paywall. That's right. Okay, got it. Good. So so kind of, you know, in terms of if you just measure not off company life, but off terms of paywall life, you know, zero to a million bucks in AR less than 12 months is pretty good. Yeah, you know, we're pretty pretty happy with it. And to give you perspective, for the bulk of the time, we didn't have any salespeople either. It was just me and my co-founder, uh, Scott, doing most of the customer calls. Okay, just two. So yeah, round up the team for me. So just two of you guys co-founders? We have three. So oh, three. myself, one of my co-founders, Scott, who heads up growth. And then we have another, Greg, who heads up uh, technology and engineering. Okay, great. And what's the total team size today? We're about 20 people today. All in New York? Which are we're all in New York in a, a flat iron area, the bulk of which are engineering. Our engineering team is the biggest team, followed by product and then followed by uh, sales. And so when we started again, we said, look, we think we know how to do business development and sales and marketing. We think we could play that game all day long. But let's first and foremost see if we can be a product-led company, much in the same way that Slack is a product-led company or Envision is a product-led company or Square is a product-led company. We think the companies that are product-led moving forward will be the ones that win. Dan, churn is critical in a SaaS business. Obviously, you know this. What's your churn today and how do you think about it? How do you manage it? Our churn is less than 4% today. Okay. Um, is that annual or monthly in logo or revenue? That is... That's a good question. Um, I would need to double check that. But, you know... Our churn is very low. And we the reason we think it's very low is twofold. One, one, the uh, price point we think is reasonable. We always felt like let's not gouge our customers' eyes out for money. Let's price the product fairly. Um, I've seen many companies just price way too high and inevitably SaaS get undercut by the next startup and the next startup. 
been free and then some other alternative business model. Um, so reasonably priced, but also, again, think about Slack. It's inherently public and viral in nature. So the minute people turn troops on, um, it becomes public to the organization. Once that happens, it becomes second nature around the way that they do work. So, you know, HubSpot is a good example. They're a customer of troops. They manage all of their leads using troops. The lead comes in, it gets, um, it gets inspected and then routed intelligently to the right team member around the world. That is how they run their process now. Um, and so to turn that off would not be such a simple thing. And the same is true of most of our companies. As, as another customer put it, you know, Culture Amp is another customer of, our, customer of ours. He, he's like, look, we use many tools. Uh, Segment is an example. He's like, three people at my company know who what uh, Segment is. But every single person knows who Troops is because it's part of the public fabric of the organization. And, and so I think that's another reason why our churn has been pretty good. Talk to me about CAC. What do you pay to acquire a new customer? Um, we've spent, you know, we've spent our... our uh, now, whatever the cost of sales with regards to the account executives. So we have two, three account executives now. We have three account executives now. We don't do any marketing. Um, we don't do any paid advertising. It's all been to date word of mouth on searches, how we've been acquiring customers. Fully diluted, though, when you include the salaries of these, obviously, guys. Now, don't disclose their obvious salary. But, I mean, are you willing to spend up to a year of first-year ACV on acquisition? Or is it six-month payback period or north of that? What do you kind of aim for? Our payback period is... Uh, it fluctuates, but it's called six months. Six Okay. Six months is actually, that's extremely low for the amount. I would say extremely low for the amount of capital you raise. Typically when you see someone raise 17 million bucks at your revenue level, their payback period is a little bit longer because they're investing in that growth. Yeah. I mean, it, it is part of the reason. And again, the way we think about the world is, as I mentioned earlier, we think the market is still so early. And so if you look at uh, Slack and the other ecosystems, they're just now beginning to invest in use cases that coincide with our use cases. And so our attitude has been, look, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's not overspend or get too aggressive. Uh, if we think the market is still maturing, let's just quietly build product. Let's perfect it. Let's make sure the customers are, are happy. We don't have a leaky bucket. And once we feel good about that, we can begin to get aggressive and lean into uh, the product that we built. I've seen way too many companies that uh, out of the gates, there's a bunch of money, products are okay. They spend on growth, they spend on sales, they acquire customers. And then guess what happens? It's like hair on fire uh, problems every single day with churn and happy customers. The product isn't working. They were sold false, false goods. Uh, so, Dan, what I'm hearing you say is you've got 17 million bucks still sitting in the bank. We have most of it still sitting in the bank. <laughs> Look, that's good stuff. Walk me through before we wrap up here. When was the last funding round? So, believe it or not, we just did a Series B a few weeks ago. It's public, but we didn't do any press around it. Um, so, we raised another uh, about $8 million just a few weeks ago. Okay, that's good. Let's wrap up here, Dan, with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Good to great, Jim yeah. Collins. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, I mean, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, you know, hard to ignore. Guy. Yeah. Number three, what's your besides your own? What's your favorite online tool for building your business? Troops. Is that is that a cop <laughs> I said, out? I said besides your own. Oh, uh, <laughs> favorite tool for building a business. I'm a fan of the Google products. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Six to eight. Okay, so pretty healthy. We'll call seven there on average. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Married. No kids? No kids. All right. And uh, how old are you? I'm 32. 32. All right, Dan, take us home. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Just just, uh, just go for broke and keep, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Um, I know that. I knew that then, but I think I know that now more than ever. Um, just get off the sidelines and just... Don't be afraid of fail. Just get in the ring. Guys, go for broke. He's doing it. He had a, a small win call it, you know, a travel the world for a month kind of win back in 20, when he was 25 years old, sold his company to Buddy Media before Buddy sold to Salesforce. He said, you know what? I'm going to give up some upside in terms of money in my pocket, leave early, free up a year of my time, got reinvolved in it with a VC firm and a health and beauty product before founding Troops in 2015, which is more and more becoming part of the social fabric of companies as they look to put more information into their CRMs and just communicate in a more human way. Over 200 companies 
company is now using them on a uh, on a uh, monthly basis and on a paid plan. Over 2,000 companies using using them in general. They've raised 17 million bucks, north of a million bucks in ARR at this point. That's in under a year of introducing their paywall. Less than 4% logo churn per month. You know, totally willing to spend about six months of LTV or six months of of uh, uh, you know monthly ARPU on acquiring these customers, which right now is really just a three person inside sales team. Their team is 20 people based mainly in New York City. Dan, thank you for taking us to the top. Right on. Thanks, Nathan.